sentence notes for determining the points of intersection. This example is fairly similar to the one we did with Winona, jumping off the bridge, opening his parachute, right? We have a graph of 10x squared minus 5x minus 3 and a second graph of negative 10x plus 2. And we want to see where they intersect, okay? So if you can make a table, you can find exact points of intersection. But you may not see all of them. Okay, even if you graph it, you might have to pick up your graph, move it over, sh make it bigger, shrink it, do something so that you can see all of the points of intersection. All right, here's what it says. It says both tables, both tables contain the point negative 112. So that is one point of intersection. This point of intersection cannot be seen in a standard graphing window. By looking at the graph, we can see that there is another point of intersection, but it does not have integer coordinates. Use the equal values method from the core connections integrated one to solve for this point. Since the graph of the functions intersect when the two equations are equal to each other, when you take f of x and set it equal to g of x, <coughs> start by solving the equation 10x squared minus 5x minus 3, set it equal to the other expression, negative 10x plus 2. They did it by adding the 10x over here, subtracting the 2x right here. That sets it equal to 0. That puts it in what we call standard form. Okay? From there, it was easily factorable. They found a GCF, obviously 5. Then they took this trinomial and factored it here and here set each of them equal to zero, and you come up with one half and negative one. But the problem we saw with Winono and his parachute was that the coefficients were not nice and pretty like that, right? They were all decimals, okay? So if you can't factor it nicely, or what I call easily, you might need to use the quadratic formula. So here's an example an appropriate time to use the quadratic formula. When your coefficients are not nice and pretty, or decimals, or radicals, whatever, something other than like the equation above, where you can kind of see there's a GCF, it's fairly easily factorable, without having to go through this whole process. Is there anyone who has the quadratic formula memorized? Lots of people. Anybody think they're confident enough to share it out? Go for it. Perfect. Okay, so you figure out what the A, the B, and the C are. They're basically the coefficients of the terms that you have when they're set equal to zero, what we call standard form. You take the A and you plug it in here and here. You take the B, bless you, and you plug it in here and here. And you take that C and you plug it in there. There should be no variables left. I mean, unless you count the X equals, okay? Then you simplify. And at some point, you will likely need to plug it into your calculator. So if you plug this into your calculator, you can get two answers. One when you use plus, and one when you use minus. Okay? Uh, 